Matt Booty, the individual probably best known as having that really bad response to the Hi-Fi Rush studio closure, has finally made a statement to Variety about the situation. Xbox also had a minor update on the FTC trial. Garrett Atkins had posted something that I retweeted. Um, it, I don't think it's as spicy as we all think it is, but we'll get into that in a second. And let's talk about games that have been missing Xbox for just a second. What is going on with Marvel? What is going on with Black Myth Wukong? What is happening? Let's get into it right now. So first things first, there was this big interview with Variety that was conducted with Matt Booty. It's called Strictly Business. I have the, the show up here and I'll link to the full episode in the description below. A lot of it is just like him being really happy about the positive reception to the Xbox conference. But we want to talk about his comments about the studio closure because there was one quote in particular that was being touted as though he implied some reasons for why Hi-Fi Rush was closed. And while I appreciate the context, I mean, like, Matt Booty, I don't think he's ever going to get off the hook for this one because it was terrible. Uh, anyway, let's get into it. There was a lot of work that went into delivering Hi-Fi Rush, which was a great game, and you know did well for us. I think the thing to be considered is that for us, it's as much such a look... This is straight from their, their uh, auto compilation of text, by the way, looking situation as much as it is looking back at one certain game. You know, there are a lot of things that go into success for a game. You know, what leadership do you have? What creative leadership do you have? Is the team the same team that shipped something successful previously? And we have to look at all those things together and then ask ourselves, are we set up for success going forward? Okay, so I'm just going to say this right now. That is a bad answer. Because that team is responsible for not one, not two, but three successful franchises. One of them cross-platform. I, I think two of them were cross-platform because they had the, the horror game genre unlocked. They had Hi-Fi Rush and they had Ghostwire Tokyo, all created by Tango Gameworks. And a lot of people were hoping that they would remake. I'm blanking on the name of the horror genre. I'm sure the commenters below will let me know. But... To say that, like, do we still have the same people? You're telling me, like, the whole studio left? We know that studio leadership left. But there was a an implication from the people who had departed that these rumors were not true. And we've talked about it before on the channel that, like, there were people on, on Twitter, of course, saying that, like, half the studio left or so many people left. And then the people who were at the studio said, yeah, that's not true. Not that many people left. Like it was several people. So I, I don't, I don't like Matt Booty's response personally. I do appreciate that he's giving a response, but no, the Hi-Fi Rush studio closure was bad. And like, I, I appreciate the additional context, but he sort of went on in this long diatribe where he uh, took us through a little bit of a journey. Let's go through it together. And while there may have been factors and situations that previously led to success, they may not all still be in place as you look at what you're doing going forward. So are they going to say the same thing about the Hellblade 2 team in the near future? Like that's incredibly concerning to hear when you're talking about the departure of a studio head. So like all of these things, like it's it's not something the fan base is just going to get over. I'm certainly not. I don't know about the rest of you, but with the Hi-Fi Rush Studio Closure, it sucks. I'm excited about what Xbox has going forward, but it, it feels like there's a, a fundamentally concerning philosophy at play here. And if your philosophy is, well, we had one piece tumble, we had the studio head leave and maybe like two other people shut her down, that, that seems concerning to me. And you know, with many of our studios, we try and look at options. I think you know an example. We recently had Toys for Bob that was previously working on Call of Duty titles go back out and become a new independent studio. And you know, I think we've announced that we've got a publishing deal with them, and we'll share more about that when it's important. I mean, yes, Toys for Bob is a unique scenario. There is no indication that the employees were given any additional options as to what to do with the studio for Hi-Fi Rush. And this is a response specifically to a Hi-Fi Rush question. So continuing on here, I think back to a studio called Twisted Pixel in Texas that we acquired and then for 
a sort of change in goals. It wasn't a perfect match anymore, but that studio today is still thriving. We wanted to set them up for success. So we absolutely look at what the possible business options are to keep a studio open or to keep, you know, perhaps have it change hands. And it's just one of the things, of course, that we look at across the board. Sometimes those things come together. Sometimes they don't. Well, the last statement I'll give him, it does seem like they did try to look at other options for, you know, Austin and the Hi-Fi Rush studio and some of the studios that they, they ended up having to close. I, I do appreciate that he said, that they were at least looking at other options. And I mean, they still closed three studios. So that's really, really unfortunate. And they folded the fourth one into the, the business operating unit. It is business. Like I recognize that it doesn't make me feel any better about that. Like you can be like, okay, yes, it's obviously a business decision that he had to make. I still don't have to like it. There was one other story, though, that I saw making the rounds. If you can hear the kids going crazy in the background, it's Saturday. So that happens. Uh, the, the other one is, you know, we all continue to make those decisions individually on a case by case basis. We are absolutely committed to having launch exclusives on Xbox. You know, it's part of our core promise and we want to continue to bring our games to more players on more devices going forward. And we certainly have got a lot of experience with that with things that have just historically been on multi-platforms for so long. This to me is a response that basically doesn't change anything. I actually first noticed this from Clobril, who said, uh, I see some focus on the launch exclusives wording, but I actually think it's a fine statement. The key takeaway here should be, A, Xbox will do more multi-platform releases going forward, some on day one, some later, case by case. Xbox will still have exclusive games. They understand its core to the value of their business, especially the console. Xbox first party is this huge thing these days where they can balance it out to cater both. Some want more transparency and I get it, but I but the truth is these decisions are indeed made on a case by case basis. And as such, generalized statements are simply not possible. Uh, Clorill being a man of sense, Brad Sams also chimed in on the topic. This is all on console exclusivity and they need to make those decisions when the game is announced. What you can't have is game announced three months of the headlines being, is this coming to PS5 and Switch? Game only on Xbox stated five months later. Absolutely agree with Brad Sams on that one. They have to be clear on messaging. This is an Xbox exclusive. No, it's not coming to PlayStation 5. If it is coming to PlayStation 5, have that branding in your announcement, especially for your content exclusives. Now, there is a really, really interesting story about games that are missing Xbox, but you should not miss my episode. So hit that subscribe button, hit that bell to know when they go live. If you already subscribed, hit that like button to help the video get through the algorithm. Now, I've talked about it a little bit, the Marvel versus Capcom fighting collection. This is only coming to PlayStation 4, Nintendo Switch, and PC, I believe, was the other platform. It's very strange because the Capcom Fighting Collection is coming to everything. Uh, let me see here. There was a great report over on Event Hubs that sort of broke down why this is happening. I forgot to bring it up. Uh, I'll link to this. So if you want to know why this particular collection is not coming to Xbox, it seems to have to do with the MT framework. Now, the MT framework is like an infrastructure that was made for the 360 era. A lot of the games in the Marvel vs. Capcom fighting collection I already own. I'm a big fighting game fan, or I would say I was a bigger fighting game fan back around the Marvel vs. Capcom 3, Street Fighter 4 days. I super got into it. Uh, you know, I still I played through like Injustice 2. So I'm really into this stuff. And these older games, Capcom has like an infrastructure called the MT framework that seems to be preventing it from coming to Xbox. Note, it's also not coming to PlayStation 5. It is specifically coming to PlayStation 4. So it is a very weird decision because they didn't even release it on the Xbox One. So I have to imagine there's something about the infrastructure that made it strange. And if you you actually look, I'm just gonna link you to the Event Hubs article. So if you wanna know why, it's because of the MT framework, they did it for the Capcom Fighting Collection, but yeah, it's it doesn't seem to be the case that MT framework can just work the way it, it normally would work. They won't be bringing in any of the games to Xbox. Windows Central reported Capcom has no pipeline for porting older MT framework titles to Xbox's modern era systems. So 
It's, it's a problem with Capcom. It is not a problem with a console. There was another major game, though, that also had some issues being ported. That is Black Myth Wukong. We got a statement via Windows Central. We can't comment. Uh, I'm just going to go to the full story. Uh, did I put this quote in? We're excited to launch Black Myth Wukong on Xbox Series X and S and are working with Game Science to bring the game to our platforms. We can't comment on the deals made by our partners with other platform holders, but we remain focused on making Xbox the best platform for gamers and great games are at the center of that. That is the statement from Microsoft. Obviously, there's something more going on here. I think it's a little strange that this particular game is not making its way to Xbox, but it is going to PlayStation. Uh, I'm excited about Black Myth Wukong. I got to play it at Gamescom a few years back, and it's really, really fun. It's really good, so I'm excited to play more of it. And the last one we had today, I know this is all like sort of an Xbox compilation video, but like some of them are so small that I didn't think they warranted an own video. I got an FTC story for you. It has been forever. Uh, Garrett Atkins noticed that there was an updated filing on the FTC website. Basically, there was a withdrawal of appearance notice. And it says, please take notice that James Weingarten hereby withdraws as attorney of record for counsel supporting the complaint in the above captioned matter. Now, that means James Weingarten likely has left the FTC or moved to another department, and he will no longer be the attorney on record for the case. It doesn't mean the case was dropped. It doesn't mean the complaint is going anywhere. It is just an updated filing that they have to do. They do this for like every little thing. If there is one redaction in a document, it is all carefully tracked in the background of this system. So that's what has been going on with the FTC case. So if you see that going around, it seems to me just to indicate that James Weingarten has withdrawn as the, the counsel and time will tell if they, this case actually goes anywhere. I think it's done. I mean, the case is done. It's Activision will have been integrated into the into Microsoft's whole ecosphere for almost a year. It, it's not going to go anywhere. So, yeah. Thanks for watching, everybody. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell to know when my content goes live. I greatly appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much to the members for supporting. I do appreciate you. Thank you so much. Click that join button if you would like to become a member. It is right down there. And if you want to see my video yesterday where I alluded to recording this video, you can check it out. It is right over there. It is all about the... Big Gamescom news. Xbox is going big at Gamescom. I had to bring it up really quick because I forgot. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you for the next one. I'm going to go help mom with the kids. <laughs> Bye, everybody.